Hello, eighth graders. It is Mrs. Mandridge and Mr. Gallant. If you didn't know, Mr. Gallant is our student teacher this semester, and he's helping me out. So we know that we're learning online and that it's kind of weird, but we want to do a lab with you guys, because why learn the scientific method if you're not going to do a lab? So I'm going to go through the materials you would need if you could do this lab at home. I would love for you to, because it's balloons and rockets and it's fun. Um, but if you can't do it at home, we're actually going to do the lab in the video and you will need to make a data table for the assignment in Google Slides. So if you can't do the lab, you can at least get our data. So come back here. Uh, in this lab, you're going to be making a balloon rocket. Basically, you're going to attach a balloon to a string and watch it fly, or to a straw and watch it fly down the string. So you will need a balloon. Okay, this is just a regular um, balloon from a bag from the dollar store. You'll need a straw, and you might have like a bendy straw at home, or if you go to Chick-fil-A or Starbucks, yes, I did steal these straws. Um, straight straws work really good, okay? Um, you could do it through a coffee straw if you had a small enough string, but remember, can I change the type of straw in the middle of my lab? No, Ms. Mandridge, that's what we call a controlled variable, right? So I have to use the same type of straw. I'm going to pick my Starbucks straw, number one, that sounds really good right now, but also it is a straight straw, not a bendy straw. So um, if you have a bendy straw, you can also cut the bendy part off. Okay, the last thing I'm going to need is some string. Sorry. <laughs> so um, you'll need about two meters of string, okay? Um, like eight to nine feet maybe, and you're going to use that as the track or the path that the balloon is going to fall on. So those are the materials you'll need. In addition, you'll need a timer. So if you have a stopwatch, that's awesome. If not, I'm using the stopwatch right here on my phone because we're going to see if the amount of air that I blow into this balloon has an effect on the time it takes it to travel down the string. Okay, so those are your materials. We're going to show you how to set it up. After you see the setup, if you are going to do the lab yourself, you can stop the video there and do the lab. If not, you can continue watching the video to get our data. Okay, so I'm going to take my straw and on that, I'm trying to put where you guys can see, um, I'm going to get a piece of tape. I'm using masking tape. You could use clear tape whatever you have to make it attached. But basically, we want the deflated balloon, okay, the balloon before the air, to be taped to the bottom of the straw, okay? So here's what I have. Straw on top, balloon on bottom, and my piece of tape might have even been a little bit big um, because you're gonna go and inflate the balloon in a little. So notice the balloon is not tight because we still need to blow air into it. Here's the fun part. Okay, I'm going to try to get my yarn, my string here, to go through the straw, okay? Um, some students are really good at this. When we do it in person, they can do it really fast. But we're all just going to awkwardly watch Miss Mandridge until she gets the string into the straw, okay? If you have a helper, um, Mr. Glant, will you hold yes. the straw? Okay. But you're just basically feeding the straw through the, or the string through the straw. You really should only have to do this once. Come on, Miss Mandridge. I can see it in there. We're almost there. Okay. Maybe I'll hold it there. Yes, I'll hold it right here. Okay. So as you can see, this part of my cake you a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Some students used air to do it. There we go. Okay, we did it. Okay, so here's your, oh no, that did not just happen. Okay, here's your setup. You're gonna have the string through the straw um, because you want the straw to travel along the string. So straws are hollow, right? And you can just move it right along the string. Is it going to move by itself? No. 
it needs a force, right? And so we are going to add air into the balloon, and when we release the air out of the balloon, it will propel our rocket forward. Okay, this is not my favorite right now. Like I said, once you have it on, you should really only have to do it at one time. Okay, so string is through the straw, balloon is attached to the string. So the next step that we're going to do is we are going to put this between two tables. So Mr. Kamal, if you'll take the far end of the string and let me take it on. We will move the camera in just a second, but we only have two people, so we can't pause it. Okay. Um, notice I am going to tape it at the end of one surface. You don't have to do this between two tables. You can tape it to the wall and to a table. You can tape it to a bookcase or tie it around something, whatever will work. Okay. So, if you'll tape that side, I'll Okay, so students, you'll remember we talked about controlled variables. Controlled variables are things that have to be the same throughout the lesson. So for example, does it matter if our string is flat across or if our string is angled up or angled down? Yeah, if I change the angle of the string each time I blow the balloon, I'm not really just measuring the amount of air in the balloon right? I'm measuring the angle of my string. So we got our string nice and tight going straight across and then we're going to add air into the balloon, okay? So how can I measure the amount of air so that I'm doing it scientifically? I can do that with the number of breaths. So what I am changing, what my independent variable is, is the number of breaths that I put into the balloon and my dependent variable is going to be how fast it travels. So, I'm going to have up this journal on, be our timer, okay? It does matter when we do this in person, it matters who you have timing, okay? So that's another controlled variable because some people have a really fast reaction time and some people, like, it takes them a second for their brain to know that they need to push the button. That's how I am. And that would affect your reaction time, right? So... We are looking at what is the effect of the amount of air on how far the balloon travels, and I have to keep some things the same. So my controlled variables are things like the type of string, the angle of the string, who blows the balloon, who does the timer. Those are all things that would change our outcome if we didn't keep them the same. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna start with five breaths, okay? So it has to be the same amount in each breath, right? To count. So let me blow up our balloon. Okay, this is like awkward with the pull. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Does it matter if I start the balloon from the same spot? Yes, it does. And that's another controlled variable. So. Um, I like to put the balloon underneath, otherwise it's going to spin, spin, spin as it goes. Uh, I'm going to release it, and if you're doing this with someone, which would be great, maybe you can say, like, ready, set, go. So when I say go, we're going to start the timer. Okay. Ready, set, go. Oh, it didn't go at all. So I, as a scientist, I'm still going to record that data. The time that it travels... Um, I could put like a scratch there or like a mark saying it didn't travel at all in trial one for five breaths, okay? Should I only do one trial though? If it didn't work the first time, should I just like throw it out? Probably not, right? So let me try that again. I'm going to try five breaths. Did we get a time? Oh, uh, 
Don't know how accurate that is, but okay. it is the time. Okay. So that time it took like 0.9 seconds, 0.86 yeah. seconds. Okay. So we have done two trials. We have done two trials of five breaths in the balloon. So our first data was like, mm, nothing, okay, it didn't go. And then our second trial, it took 0.86 seconds. So second set of trials here, I'm gonna try it with 10 breaths. So I'm gonna do 10 breaths into the balloon and I'm gonna have Mr. Gallant measure the time it takes for the balloon to travel. So here we go. Again, I need to do two trials at least. Usually we would do three or more, but I'm on the floor of my room making a video. So I'm going to do a second trial with 10 breaths. So this is trial two, 10 breaths. Here we go. Okay. 10 breaths. Here we go. Ready, set, go. But when you're doing a timer, sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you want. So we're going to do, um, this is trial two, 10 reps. Here we go. Remember, I can't just do it once and call it good. I need a second trial. So here's trial two of 15 breaths. Here we go. Who's blowing the air? 
who is doing the timer. Those are all controlled variables. If we changed any of those, do you think it would change the outcome of our experiment? I definitely do. So the last part of coming up or of doing an experiment is coming up with a follow-up experiment. So in the last part of your Google Slides, it's going to ask you what's a follow-up experiment you could do. Pick one of your controlled variables and try it out. Okay, I can change the angle of the screen. string. What if I have it going down like a slide? That's probably going to make it go faster, right? So I can see what is the effect of the angle of the screen, and I can keep it flat. I can put it at 45 degrees. I can put it at 90 degrees. I can see if the angle of the screen affects how fast the balloon will travel. So we would like you to go to your Google Slides, fill in this lab, and turn it into us no later than Monday. Okay, have fun with the experiment. Remember, if you don't have a balloon, you can use the data from this video in your Google Slides. Thank you. Thanks, guys.